I just want to let you know I'm going to record the session. Some people have asked uh, for a copy of it due to the fact that they couldn't make it at lunchtime. So if any of you do want a copy of the session as well, I'm very happy to send it to you. Tasha said, sorry, multitasking, working, dealing with the two-year-old. Hey, that's what parents about. So Tasha, just put me on speakerphone and put it on silent and go for it. I'm totally comfortable with that. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure everyone is muted. Um, and then if you want to give a response, then uh, please feel free to do so. You know, unmute yourself or make a comment in the chat box. But I think I'm going to get started. So people who are going to join. Is that Judy? Hey, Judy, welcome. Okay, here's Vern has just joined us. Welcome, Vern. All right. Okay, so good afternoon and welcome to How to Raise Secure Kids. In a, in a book world, it's all around parenting world changes. I really believe that we have um, the responsibility as we raise a generation that we could equip them and empower them to make a change in the world that we're living in. Um, the session, I'd like it to be some in interactive. I'm going to give you some news about some stuff, uh, some facts, and I'd love your comments on it. So first of all, um, as you know, my name is Mandy Hart, and I want to say thank you. Thank you for giving me the gift of your time. I know time is really precious, especially over lunchtime and with kids and everything that's going on. Um, and because of that, giving me the gift of your time, at the end, I'm going to be sending you just a free ebook on how to have significant conversations with your children, just as a, a way of me saying thank you. Um, and yeah, I just want to honor you for taking the time out and thinking about how we're going to parent children and do things differently. So think about the world, think about what's different now, um, how are things different, how has the world changed? Uh, I've chatted to many moms and they are battling with digital boundaries, um, anxiety and depression in children is skyrocketing. I have a friend who works in that space and she says she can't keep up with the amount of children that are battling with anxiety and with depression. It's just, it's just wreaking havoc. I can see one of the moms nodding that I know is in the educational sphere. And um, yeah, it's just something that we really, really are battling in today's world. So we're going to be speaking about a VUCA world, uh, how to parent in this landscape, how to parent on purpose, how to remove the stress and the fear of the unknown, and how to know that great parenting is possible. It is something that you can definitely do in a world Sorry, I'm just admitting people <laughs> as we're going along. Um, so parenting in a book world is possible. Um, so I want to just ask you, how, how do you think parenting has changed over the past years? 20 years ago, the internet wasn't around. Um, five months ago, things were very, very different. Um, I don't know which generation all of you are from, but I am a digital pioneer. I'm a generation Xer, and <laughs> um, my generation pioneered Kind of the internet thing but my children and all your children's children are digital natives so the landscape is totally totally different um, i empower parents to raise and release world changes i've been involved in family ministry for over 20 years so just giving you a bit of background about who i am i've worked in multiple countries ranging from west africa ghana through to east africa to the middle east madagascar urban environments scotland um, and south africa multiple countries I've written actually four books, three parenting, and one uh, called Courage in the Fire, Overcoming Fear. I also create and run parenting courses and coach and am a qualified counselor. So I have worked with families for a long time. But most of all, I think the thing that qualifies me maybe to share a little bit on this is that I'm a mom. <laughs> I'm a mom of two teenagers I, and, and I am an imperfect mother. I don't get it right, I make lots of mistakes. But what I realized when I was much, um, when my children were younger, I decided to go on an intentional parenting journey. So I did courses, I was coached, and I learned from those around me. They say that we need to learn from our mist all mistakes, but they don't have to be all our mistakes. Um, so yeah, so learn from me, learn from those around you. Um, and this is where a VUCA world comes into play. So a VUCA world stands for a volatile, 
uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. I'm going to explore that at depth and give you some tips on how to parent in that space. It was first used in 1987, uh, and it describes a world that is in constant change. Think about it now. The world we're in is in constant change. It's, things are not the same as what they were a while back. And um, they are just written out so you can actually see what is a book of world. Um, in 1 Chronicles 12, it says, the sons of Issachar discerned the times and they knew what to do because they understood what was happening. And as parents, I think we have to be the same. We have to discern the times. We have to read and see what's going on in the world. And we have to understand how to parent in this landscape. So a volatile stands for the speed of change. The more volatile things are, the faster things change. Think about how parenting is very different now. Um, with the LGBTQ plus movement, um, I don't know about you, but I read on the news the other day of a man giving birth to his second child. And there were pictures, full on pictures of a man in a birthing bath. And it's just volatile. You know, on a macro and a micro level, things are changing. Uh, the way we view families is changing. It's, it's unpredictable. Uh, the U stands for uncertainty. And that's how confidently we can predict the future. The more uncertain things are, the harder it is to predict the future. Now, I'm going to keep coming back to family because this is about parenting, but think about the educational environment, how uncertain things are, how you cannot predict the, the future. We, we didn't know in December <laughs> what we would be doing right now. I mean, I know for one as a mom of a matriculant, I expected my daughter to be finishing matric by mid-November. She'd be planning her December holiday and we're A for away for what she wants to do. <laughs> Everything's changed. I see some moms nodding and agreeing with me. So everything has changed. It's really, really not the same, the same world. It's uncertain. I have to keep helping her bounce back. And one of the things in an uncertain environment is we have to cultivate resilience in our lives and in the, the children that we with. The C stands for complex world. Um, in my book, Parenting World Changes, I have an appendix where I speak about parenting through the complexity science. And a complexity is really something where there's so many factors involved that you have to take into account. They have a ripple effect and you can't go back to the way things were before. So the for example, a chocolate cake and an airplane, one is complex and one is complicated. When you make a chocolate cake, you put the eggs in, the cocoa, the flour, everything. But you, 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 know, you bake it in the oven and you take it out. You can't go back to having those separate ingredients. So it's complex. Each ingredient affects the other one, which then produces a different product. So we love it. I, know, I don't know about you. I love chocolate cake. <laughs> but um, if you take an airplane, I can put, take an airplane apart. Actually, I can't. But if someone knew how to, they could. But they could put it back together. It's complicated. It's not complex. And so we're seeing all these factors in the world at the moment. And they, they have a ripple effect because they, they affect the way we do family. They affect the way we raise children. Um, and then we get to ambiguity. There's a lack of clarity on how to interpret things. So nothing is clear anymore. Um, for example, I was chatting to a mom. I was, had a coaching session with a mom yesterday. She has a four-year-old in the UK. And she was asking me, now that the transgender movement has entered the school, how does she relate to those conversations? Because they're going to be teaching different family structures in school. And how does she talk to her four-year-old about things? Um, it's just things are ambiguous. Nothing is clear. We don't know how to navigate it. And what all of this can do is produce fear in us as parents, because then we start to parent out of fear and not out of love. Fear and love cannot coexist in the same space in our brains. And so what that means is that we we then start to react instead of respond. We start to move towards punishment instead of discipline. Discipline is training and with correction and guidance. We start to become more and more inconsistent instead of parenting intentionally with consistency. And I've polled a number of moms and they said to me, consistency is one of their biggest challenges in parenting, trying to stick with it and, and stay the course. So it's really hard to parent when the threats out there are very real. Um, it's hard to parent when, you know, the, there's things that we're worried about and produces those fears in us. Um, so how do we adapt our parenting? And I think that's why all of you are on this call. You want to know how do I handle life in a volatile, uncertain, complex world? How do I adapt? So one way is that, and I think you can write this down, is to practice intentional parenting. 
you might hear me speak about that quite often during <laughs> these 30 minutes, but how to practice intentional parenting. It's parenting on purpose, becoming a study of your children, knowing what's going on and understanding the times. Um, you consider all the factors and then you start to apply wisdom. So, you know, considering the staggering increase in depression and anxiety in children, the mental health crisis that, as I was reading news, it's, it's affecting all of us all over the world. How do I adapt now with this environment? I think for us, first of all, as parents, it comes down to us. How do we take care of ourselves? How we, you know, because we reproduce ourselves and our kids. So, so how do we do that? And I want to give you five tips and please feel free to make, write these down is first of all, breathe. So some of you who know me, I speak and some of you might know this technique really well. You just breathe in and you breathe out as you go down. So I just call it the take five technique. Breathe in and breathe out as you go down your second digit. Breathe in and breathe out. And so what this does is, as you teach it to your kids and yourself, it just calms your blood pressure down, <laughs> it calms your breathing down, and it settles your body, it settles your nervous system. Um, it's a great tool that you can teach your kids, and for you as well, when you're feeling overwhelmed and things are too much, just, just remember, take five. I'm sure there must be a chocolate ad around this, eh? <laughs> or something, but take five, just breathe. Um, secondly, get educated, but screen the news. I know of, um, someone who in the, he's actually also funny enough in the UK, and he just, he doesn't even read the news. He says, the news is the same, the stats just change. And for him, it doesn't produce healthy feelings in him. So, so educate yourself what's going on, but really be careful of what sources you're listening from and what you're speaking about. In doing so, you know, you cultivate a growth mindset. So as you grow and as you learn, and you help your children cultivate that growth mindset, it will help you adapt and overcome. Thirdly, celebrate moments of connecting with your children. When fear starts to really affect our lives, it closes us down. And anger and anxiety, all of those can, a lot of them are affected by fear. And so when we connect with our children and we, we really practice active listening and we, we love on them, it really helps them to adapt and help them feel more safe. And it helps us as well. Um, I spoke about creating an intentional parenting plan with steps to overcome Booker. And I'll give you, I'm going to break that down in the next 10 minutes or so, but um, give you some practical handles on how to overcome volatile, uncertain, complex, and an ambiguous environment. And then, um, so those are the five tips. So when you create an, I'm oh, sorry, my fifth tip is in a book world, as parents, we need extra grit and we need extra self-care. Um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I just wake up feeling pretty tired. <laughs> And I know my daughter is quite tired. She comes home from school some days, really, really tired. And I've had to adapt the way we do things, how we help her exercise, how we help her rest, but also how I take care of myself. So I just want to pause for a moment. Um, write down, perhaps write down one takeaway just from what I've shared. Sorry, guys, we have a storm hitting us right now. So I hope the volume and noise is okay. Um, but write down maybe one thing that stands out to you. And does anyone want to just share for one minute, like something that jumps out at you from what I've shared? You could unmute yourself or just put it in the chat box. I love the high five. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> They're breathing. Yeah, it's interesting. That's cool. I found that really good. And uh, your active listening. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, active listening is great. Tasha also said the take five. I, I think that is a really helpful tool. I had to remind myself a few times where I've put up my hand like this and went, take five, take five, you know, and help myself with that. So that's great. Thank you. Okay, so how do, how do overcome Vuka? Because I think that's partly why some of you are here as well. Um, is in a volatile world, how you counter but not counterfeit, but <laughs> overcome Booker and you counter it is with vision. Um, in my parenting class last week, I spoke to the moms about how to create a family vision. So because things are vol volatile and they're changing, it beca everything becomes unclear. So when you start parenting with the end in mind, so depending, I know some of you moms that are on it have got very young kids, some have got teens. When you parent with the end in mind, you have to parent with a vision. So you have to think, oh, I'm raising someone else's husband or wife, someone else's 
mother, someone else's father. What kind of adult do I want to raise one day? And what is the vision we can set for our family? And you could even create a, with your kids, like we are da 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 da, and you you create some vision statements for your family because in a volatile volatile environment, when we don't have vision and we don't live out of our values, it really makes things more uncertain. And I, I'm a great fan of actually identifying your values, knowing what they are, and then actually discussing them in your family and and activating it. Secondly, how you can overcome VUCA is in an uncertain world, you need to grow your understanding. So understanding the world your children are growing up in. We can't pretend things are how they were. And many parents are not aware of TikTok and safe you know, devices, you know, how to put um, screening things on their devices so the kids can't access any you know, websites. That many parents are not diligent and I think we have to be, but we have to be understanding. And um, so as we love our children deeply and we know their world, we can put certain boundaries in place. And with those boundaries, again, comes safety because we all thrive when we have boundaries. So chat your children around social media limits, you know, those boundaries, etiquettes, um, how do they, what do they struggle with in their peer group, in their environment, um, all these things. One, one child that we were, um, that I know battles with anxiety and depression, his parents never allowed him or had no limits on any movies or games that he played from when he was a young child. So when he was 10 and under or even 11, he was playing 18 plus gaming and movies. He could watch really violent stuff. And we know that that's affected his life. Um, and so I think we do need to put these boundaries in place. I just see a message here from Philippa. In my practice, I'm seeing very anxious and overwhelmed parents who are parenting reactively and becoming exhausted. They really do need a new strategy. And I agree with you, Philippa. We, ha we need new skills. We need a new strategy for how to parent. Because if we burn ourselves out, we're not going to raise a generation of children that can change the world. Um, we, ha we have to think, how do we raise our sons and daughters that as they grow up, they can create new businesses. They can have medical breakthroughs through you know, what they're doing. They can change the environment, the economy, um, all these things. So yeah, thanks, Philippa. I really agree with you. We need new skills. And I think some of those new, new skills is actually just coming back to basics, saying what's my vision? What's our values? How can I create understanding and empathy for my children? But how do I also care for myself? Because caring for myself is caring for my children too. Um, Thirdly, in a complex environment, we can't go back to the way things were. And I don't think we initially want to. You know, we, we don't want to go back to where South Africa or the nations of the world, the way it was 50 years ago, or even 100 years ago. Um, so how do you develop new strategies around the ages and stages that they're at? How do you discipline with wisdom and empathy and connection? Do you have an action plan? Um, even now, think about the way you parent. Are you parenting on purpose? with an action plan. Do you write things down? I remember when my kids were in preteen stage, you kind of in a teacher trainer role, I would literally at the back of my journal have notes, teach Matt and Emily how to, and I remember one time I wrote, teach them how to be a friend, teach them how a formal table was set, teach them how to, what to post on social media. I would literally sit them down and hey guys, do your parents, the public, the president, does God, does your pastor approve of all these things that you're posting? Um, because, and then I taught them that whatever they post is always there. It's not gonna, can't disappear if you just delete the app. And so it really, really is something that we do need to train our kids. And as we develop an action plan, we adapt things. We adapt out the way we parent. We adapt the different stages our children go through. As we head into teens, we become a coach and then we move to a mentoring role. But we have to change, we have to adapt. And so when we understand things are volatile out there, they're uncertain, they're complex, and they're ambiguous. We then learn to adapt. So I'm just sort of going back. So in a volatile, we create vision and values. In an uncertain environment, we develop understanding. In a complex environment, we, we raise our children with clarity. And for, for one family, clarity on how to raise their children might look different from another family. Because sometimes different isn't bad, it's just different. And so the values that I have, for example, if I have education as a value, I will express it differently to someone else who might not have education as a high value. If I have fun as a value, I will express it differently, my life to someone who doesn't have fun. So different is just different. 
But when we have clarity as to how, what is our family unit like? How, how are we going to function? What is my worldview? What are the choices that I make? Then that helps us parent with clarity. A stands for ambiguity. So when everything is open to interpretation, we need to learn to become adaptable. So we adapt our approach to learning. Um, again, I mentioned earlier, how do we adapt when our children come home and say, you know, the teachers are teaching them about transgender things at school. How, how, do, we, how do we have those conversations? How do we engage with our children that we connect with them all through the ages that they go through so that when they leave home one day, we've released them, we know that they can fulfill the plans and purposes over their lives. Not Mandy's plan for my kid's life. You know, I don't want my kids to live my dreams. I want them to live their dreams, which are different to my dreams. And I have to be okay with that. So, so when things are ambiguous and uncertain and open to more interpretation, I have to learn then to adapt how I parent and um, as my children grow. So I've shared some four things and five ways to adapt and four things around ambiguity, complexity, uncertainty, and a volatile environment. Maybe now just write down one takeaway. What's the one thing that you can implement in your family even now? Or could you share something with someone? Because I actually even read today, you know, when we have all this knowledge without application, it doesn't make a difference in our lives. You know, um, we can have all this knowledge, go to all these parenting courses, webinars, but unless we apply it and we practice active learning, things don't, you know, our lives don't change. So does anyone want to share just one point that stood out to them or something that you think you could apply in your family now based on those points? Welcome back, Philippa. <laughs> Sorry. No problem at all. Family vision, thank you. Is it Elena? I'm not sure how to say your name. What? Yeah, okay. Thank you, family vision. Anyone else want to share? Um, I like the, the point that you made where you teach the children something like, you know, sometimes we're so busy with our own lives and you, know, you don't really take the time to actually sit and say, okay, this is how you formally lay a table. You normally do it in a rush or in a stress moment. I found that quite valuable. Yeah. Mm. Thanks, Laureen. I remember once teaching them how to hear my voice and, um, and then eventually also how to hear God's voice. And so I put an obstacle course in my dining room or my lap <laughs> and I would speak in a whisper and um, with noise distractions, like I would play music and then get some, my other daughter to make noise or my daughter to make noises while Matt walked through this obstacle course blindfolded. And then I would speak quiet and I teach him how to obey and hear voices and put guidance and direction. So you can definitely make it fun based on the age of your stage. Um, Tasha said, getting to know my kids, family time. Yeah. We have to become very um, good students of our children and know what makes them tick, what, what makes them come alive, what makes them angry, what makes them sad, what makes them, you know, just, yeah, just smile. Like I remember seeing my son play certain sports and he, whenever I'd see him on the field, he would be smiling, but other sports, he wouldn't be smiling. And then I'd reflect that back to him and say, hey, Matt, I noticed when you come off the rugby field, you're smiling, but when you playing cricket, <laughs> you know, it's not that, ex you know, you're not smiling as much and, you know, just help them understand who they are. So thank you for sharing that. So, yeah, so these are just, you know, some of the ways that you can train yourself and your children to thrive in a different world. Um, I think for me, I'm passionate about helping parents grow and draw, get confidence to help draw the wells that are within their children. I think more and more I realize that's one of my passions is to see moms and parents and families thriving. You know, there's, there's many things, out, people out there that are doing similar stuff and I think it's great. So in a VUCA world, uh, we've discussed what it is, how to adapt, how to become more intentional, how to get new parenting skills. And for some of you, it might mean learning EQ. It might mean actually doing research about the, what the social media things that are out there. It might mean putting in certain boundaries that you haven't put in before. It might mean having tricky conversations with your children around sex and gender and porn and all those things. It might mean discovering what's making them anxious. Uh, it might mean dealing with your own stuff. It might mean dealing with your own growing up years and your pain. And you know, if you need help and support, it might mean dealing with things like that. So, so when, you know, parenting differently, it has to look differently. And you can't parent the way your parents parented 
or the generations gone by because as I said in the beginning we don't the internet wasn't around and everything is different so um, we've got three minutes left so what I'd like to do is just uh, give you two options and then um, just invite some feedback so um, in the two options that I want to present to you you can use what I've shared here apply it um, please reach out to me there's plenty of takeaways that you know they are that you can have in from our talk you could have the you could use it and apply it um, it can make a difference in your family now if you're not parenting on purpose and you realize actually hang on I do need to learn to parent on purpose um, Tasha just said yeah I did an emotional intelligence course and it's amazing yeah cultivating self-awareness and emotional intelligence I think is one of the greatest things I discovered along my parenting journey because suddenly you realize why you're getting angry at your kids and it's not actually at them. It's something that's going on inside of you. So it really is that. Um, but option two that I want to present to you is just what if we continued a parenting journey together? Um, you know, what if you became a community, part of a community of parents and to help raise and release world changes? So if you're interested in working with me, I've put the link in our chat box. I set aside 15 to 30 minutes slots free calendar slots, um, no obligation call, where I can chat with you about where your family's at, what are your challenges, what are you facing, um, and then if it makes sense for us to work together from there, we could take it from there. But there really is no pressure. Um, it's on a first come first serve basis. So I, I work with 10 moms a month, and when that's full, then I just push it over to the next, the next month. But if you'd like to explore a journey together, then, then that would be amazing. Um, so just copy that or else just go to my website mandyhart.net and there is a um, link at the top that says free events you click on there book a time slot it's a zoom appointment and we can just talk about your family and I could give you some tips and, and help you from there but we have one minute to go because I said I would honor the one minute you know the one to one thirty slot um, but before we go just anyone want to share any last points or ask any questions Okay, you guys are you hire your team. Yeah, go for it. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I, I actually I don't know if there's enough time for this, but perhaps in as a follow up we can look at that. I just want to know. I, I admire that you were very intentional and you had a vision for your children. Um, what happens when your children, when you have family or friends that are not uh, as committed to their covenant with Christ as you are, and perhaps don't share your your similar values? in terms of Christianity, how do you approach those friendships and family members, especially as they influence your children? Yeah, Haley, that's a very uh, good question. It actually deserves a longer answer. I agree with you than what we have time for. So please, can you actually book an appointment with me? And then I'd love to talk it through <laughs> with you. But I think in any family, irrespective, you'll have friends who have different values to you. And I think, um, I know, for example, one family, when my kids were really young, we tell their children that every meat was chicken. Lamb was chicken, beef was chicken, fish was chicken, everything was chicken. And she would bribe her kids for everything that they, everything they had to go to a dentist appointment, her kids would get three, 400 rand gift. They had to go to school, they'd get gifts. And just, it was teaching them, you know, just very <laughs> different things that we didn't agree with as a family. And I would have multiple conversations with my three and four year old, why they couldn't understand why beef was chicken, lamb was chicken and why they can't get the latest Lego box after a dentist appointment or, you know, after going to school for the week. Um, and so we had to explain to them how our family does things and their family does things differently. Um, but this is what our family is like and how much we love them and adore them. And so I think um, for you to figure out what your family values are like, what your family culture is like, and then be intentional in communicating that to your children still loving other families around you, but also there came a point where we actually decided not to let our kids go play at that house because every time they would come back, my kids would have wanted a specific toy. They would go to that house and they would get that toy. And then I'd have to do damage control. Yes. So eventually we just said they can come visit us at our house on our terms. And that friendship actually naturally right. it out <laughs> because I was really doing a lot of Thank damage you. control. But yeah, please schedule the time with me and I can answer it further. But thank you everyone for your time. Thank you, Mandy. And pleasure. And please keep an eye on your inbox. I'm just sending you that free ebook. And again, schedule the call, no obligation. I'd love to chat with you and connect with you. And I'd love your feedback. Also just reply and let me know how things, how it went for you, what you learned, what you enjoyed, what you didn't enjoy. 
uh, I welcome your feedback. So thank you and have a great afternoon, everyone. Thanks, man. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks, Philippa. Interesting. Thank you. Now we have to go out and do it, hey? Yeah, go out and do it. We go practice it. <laughs> It's an exciting world. We release world changes in this kind of environment. We release children who can really, really change the world. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll stay on for an extra minute or two. If anyone wants to ask any questions, you know, the meeting's officially <laughs> over. So if anyone has any questions, please feel free. I want you to ask you, how did your children respond to the fact that you said to them that they should rather not go and play at those children's houses? Because I find that that my kids, I can often give like quite a, like a strict meaning over what I think. And um, for most of the time they accept it, but in the beginning it's a little bit rough, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it's quite annoying actually. Well, they, well, they were very young at the time. So oh, okay. it was easy to just say to them, hey, why don't they come play at our house? And just kept doing play dates at our house rather. Or if we'd go visit them, I would make sure, you know, I'd just keep it short or something. Um, but when, as my kids got older, and my son still has a lot of friends whose values are very different from our family's values, we intentionally talk about them. We say, we, we know you're friends with this boy, and we love him. He's an amazing guy. But bear in mind, his values are different to us. We, we agree with da-da-da-da-da. Um, and he's like, yeah, mom, we know. I yeah. love that. And I'm like, yeah, you can love him and be friends with him, but we want you to make sure you get the right influences. So we were very intentional. We still are with a 19 and 18 year old. I'm still very intentional in my conversations, very open. I chat to my kids about all sorts. And I think yeah. if we don't speak to our kids about those things, someone else will. And I don't know what info they're going to get then. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Lorraine. Oh, yeah. Okay, anyone, any last questions? Otherwise, I'm going to close off. Francis, Tasha, Judy, Mary Lou. Okay, well, that's it. Everyone, thank you. And keep an eye on your inbox for um, what I'm going to be sending you. And yeah, if you haven't made an appointment, see me, please do so. Okay, cheers. Bye. Thanks, bye.